Hey guys, Eric here. Today we're going to work on converting this regular bike into a crazy cool electric bicycle that can handle all sorts of different terrain. It can go in the woods, it can go over a mountain bike course, it can go in the city, it can take you to work, it can help you run errands. This bike is going to be able to do everything. When this bike is finished, it'll be a thousand watt mid-drive electric bicycle with five different levels of pedal assist and it probably take you speeds of around 30 miles an hour. The bike I'm using in this conversion is the North Rock XCOO with four inch fat tires. Here's all the tools I used. Zip ties, specialty bike tools, hex keys. I'll show you how you can get all these so you can start your own conversion. Loctite. The first tool I'm using here is the Park Tool PW5 to help me get the pedals off. You don't necessarily need this tool if you have uh, wrenches of different sizes, but I found that this tool is very helpful. So I'm going to turn the right pedal of the bike to the left. It's important to keep the pieces of your bike handy so you know where they are. You don't want to lose these, maybe even bag them up, put them on a tray, put them in a, uh, somewhere safe. So you're definitely going to need one of these tools, the CCP22 crank puller, and uh, you can't really do without it. You need some kind of version of this tool uh, to get this next part. Put it in here, uh, start twisting to the right. Make sure that it really threads in there. Okay, now I'm just gonna hold with my, steady with my left hand, start spinning this tool to the right. And then when they meet, it can be really, really hard uh, to get it to continue to pull. So right now I'm, I'm on the left side of the bike and I'm really, really can be a struggle to get this to continue to go to pull this off. There we go. All right, so now I'm doing the right side of the bike. And again, it can be very difficult. I'm trying to pop this part of the bike off. And there we go, my chain came with it. So for the one of the toughest parts of the conversion, you're going to need a tool like this, the BBT22. Uh, your bike may be different size, you might need a different size one, and a wrench similar to this. So I'm going to go ahead and get that together and get started. This can be a better position to get more leverage on your bike. Uh, this can be the trickiest part here, so you might want to turn your bike upside down. Just make sure you're doing it safely. So what I'm gonna do here is kind of brace myself in the bike because I don't want it flopping all over the place. This is the left side of the bike. So it's gonna come off coming to the left. So this might be really hard to do. You might have to really put a lot of weight and energy into it to get it to budge. And to get the right side out, we're putting all of our energy, turning that to the right. Turning to the right. It can always be very important to test your equipment before installing it. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna hook it up here and give it a good test before we, before we actually install it. 
Make sure the arrows line up on this. Green, we're gonna use the seven, this is the 750C. Again, arrows line up. The thumb throttle. And the battery I'm using here is unit pack power 48 volt, 13 amp hour vet battery. Okay, so that should, once the battery's hooked up, now I like to make sure the battery is, uh, uh, test it and it's got no lights on it there. So then I plug it in while it's not, uh, while it's turned off. Now those are all hooked up. I'm gonna turn the battery on. On the switch on the side. Let's hold this on button now. And welcome. Okay, good. So now I just want to test the throttle. And I'll hold it up for you. It is functioning. So I'm going to turn off the battery and unplug it and get to installing it. So next thing we're gonna do is get this on there with these. So we're gonna set it up here, line up the holes, screw it in. So you definitely gotta make sure you have the right size bottom bracket uh, and you order the right size bottom bracket mid-drive. And you know, one of the ways you can do it is by using your phone's level or measure app. Get a little closer, whoop, a little too close, right there. Try to get all the way to there. And it is 10 centimeters. See it up there, 10 centimeters, which is 100 millimeters. So I know that I ordered the 100 millimeter motor. So that's what you need to determine on your bike is that size. You can also probably more accurately use a caliper tool, um, which I can't find mine right now. Stick it in here. Make sure you put the side with the, the bumps, the ridges facing that way towards the motor. And then use these two screws. Next thing I'm gonna do is use some Loctite uh, to put this ring on here. So I'm going to apply it the bike around the threaded area all the way around so that this ring does not have a chance of slipping with the terrain that I'm going to be taking it on over some sweet jumps. So what I'm going to be using to tighten this uh, which I didn't have initially and I just got, is the Park Tool HCW5. It's got like this claw thing. Arr. And can really help you tighten this bolt, which is, this is the one you want to really tighten up. Over top of it. All right, I'm gonna get ready to install these. Um, make sure you put them on the correct side. One of them is for the right side, one of them is for the left side. And so, oh, make sure you get those right. Next, we're gonna put the pedals on.
I'm gonna put a few under these little rubber straps to make sure that the spacing is correct. It's not wobbling around, so I think two of them will do the trick. Now you can do this however you like. Some people like to keep this on the right side. Some people like to keep this on the left side. I prefer to keep it on the left side with the throttle. I like to use um, one hand to do all of it. So it's up to you though. You can put it here or on the other side. So now I'm gonna work on removing the grip and find one of the best ways to do this is uh, use both hands, turn the grip towards you while sort of pulling towards the outside of the handlebar. So twist and pull. So I'm going to put this here, the pedal assist levels and on off. And because I like to use just one hand to control the bike, and then I put uh, overlap it with my thumb throttle. Got to make sure I put it far enough away from the grip and the brake. So I'll kind of measure that out. Need a little more room for the brake. Like a little bit of. Let's see. Right there is perfect, and I'm gonna get all of those tightened down. And to get the grip on, I'm just turning it now away from me, gently pushing towards the handlebar. I might even just use one hand. So I'm gonna install the brakes and I put a little double-sided sticky on the I usually like to start with them almost touching and I'll put them on here and hold it for a little bit so they're securely fastened ready to go next we're gonna get the speed sensor installed and it's going to go on the back tire like this and the bad it's gonna pass very closely not touching but just a millimeter or so or two millimeters away from passing really close. So I'm gonna install this on the spoke with a regular pair of. So I've gone ahead and put some zip ties around the speedometer, odometer reader here. And I'm going to attach Now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and run the wire for this. So here's two different batteries. Uh, both, both of these are 48 volt. Uh, the one on the left is 15 amp hours and the one on the right is 13 amp hours. And the difference that this makes on the bike that we're working on today is probably on average, let's say 
three miles per hour uh, difference. You can probably get a little faster on the bigger battery. And then you can probably get, let's say another, without pedaling, another five to 10 miles. So I'm putting the battery on the right on the bike because the one on the left does not fit. So that's a factor you have to consider when choosing a battery. Uh, these are both unit pack power and they have worked great for me. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know.